Good afternoon. So I would like to thank uh, the organizer for inviting me to present this session. Maybe next time, Mohamed, you can change because we are always starting with biology and maybe next time we can start with, I don't know, immunology or elderly patient or CAR T cells. Okay, so uh, the organizers asked me to make an, an update about cytogenetics and genetics. So I think that uh, at least in many European countries and outside of US, I think that uh, next generation sequencing is not yet here. And the gold standard for me is still interface uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization. Of course, the sorting of plasma cells is mandatory and we still see some labs who are just uh, performing fish on uh, the total bone marrow, which is totally crazy. And to me, I think that the most important abnormality we have to look for are the 17P deletion, the 1P32 deletion, 1Q gain, translocation 414. And, uh, but again, uh, we know that in the IMWG high-risk uh, definition, we don't have the 1P, we have 17P, we have 1Q and 414. And we decided in IFM to try to revisit uh, the, uh, the performance of uh, all these abnormalities in predicting patient outcome. And so we did analyze uh, quite a big number of patients for uh, training and then for confirmation. And uh, using SNP away, we were able to look at all the chromosomal abnormalities, and we came up with six abnormalities. One, uh, one is associated with good prognosis, which is trisomy 5, and all the other are associated with poor outcome, trisomy 21, 414, 1Q gain, uh, uh, deletion 1P, and deletion 17P. And so we did uh, propose uh, an algorithm, and so you just take this number and you add uh, plus, plus, plus. So for example, and we stratify the patient with uh, patients with a score lower than uh, or equal to zero, so meaning patients with no, no high-risk abnormality or with uh, trisomy 5. And you can see it is a blue curve uh, at, the, at the top. Uh, the intermediate risk is uh, between zero and one, and the high risk is more than one. And you can see that, for example, 17P deletion, all these patients are in the high risk category. In contrast, if you are taking the 414 translocation patients, the score is only 0 0.4. This means that not all these patients are really high risk. And so I think that in the future, we will have to revisit uh, our definition of high risk because you can see that in all the trials, uh, pharma or academic, you can see that patients are still defined like this. And I'm really convinced now that not all the patients with 414 uh, are really high risk. And so we did uh, validate this uh, model in an external uh, cohort, and we confirmed that. So, of course, it has been built in patient treated uh, 10 years ago because we wanted to have a long follow-up to try to identify good risk feature, and to find good risk, you need to have follow-up. But definitely, I think we should try to look at these abnormalities nowadays in uh, ongoing uh, trials with uh, novel drugs. So to conclude this first part on fish, so 414 uh, alone is not anymore a high waste feature, and so we need to revisit uh, the MWG. Again, 1416 is included in uh, the MWG with a very, very low demonstration of the prognostic impact. It is really rare, 3% of the patients, and so you need to have thousands of patients to be able to confirm the prognostic value of the 1416. And then 1Q gain and deletion 1P, we need to have more data to try to validate uh, these two abnormalities uh, for the future. So the question now is, okay, fish is good. 
could or should we switch uh, to uh, next generation sequencing and especially targeted next generation sequencing? So if we just looked uh, at the number of mutations we see in, in myeloma, myeloma is just in the middle. So here you have the leukemias with very low number of mutation. Here you have melanoma, lung cancer, carcinogen-induced tumor with a very high number of mutation. And so myeloma is just in the middle. It could have some consequences for the future when we will go, or if we will go to immune therapy, and especially to checkpoint inhibitors. More than 1,000 patients have been exome sequenced, and uh, if we try to categorize these patients, we can see that about half of the patients have either a QS or NWAS mutation. And after you can see that all the other mutations are very well, 11% for D3 and FAM 46 c 8% for TP53 mutation, uh, BWAF in 6% and after it's very low. So again, myeloma is very heterogeneous and it is very difficult to try to propose a classification based on these abnormalities. How, uh, so in the future, probably we need more data, but again, we have more than 1,000 patients already sequenced. It has been shown that all the most frequent abnormalities have no prognostic impact. The only one with uh, high risk is TP53 mutations, usually observed in patients with 17P deletion, and the other are very rare. So maybe we will identify very rare mutation with a good or poor prognosis, but again, I'm not sure it will be very useful. So to try to use these information for uh, uh, the prognostic assessment of patients, we did develop with our colleague Nikin Munch in Boston a targeted exome panel. And we did select uh, 250 genes recurrently mutated in myeloma. We selected also almost uh, 2,500 SNPs to assess the copy number, and especially the 17P, 1P, 1Q, and trisomy. And we did select the all IGH sequences to be able to identify all the translocation, the 414, 1416, 1420, 1114, 814, etc. And so uh, we did use that. And so, for example, we have this kind of cartoon. So you have all the chromosome here, and this patient, you have a typical translocation between chromosome 4 and chromosome uh, 14, with uh, here, for example, a BWAF mutation. Another patient here with a translocation 1114 with a WANX1 one mutation. Another one with a 1416. And a subclonal mutation of MMSET here, for example. And here you have another patient. So the external cycle here is at diagnosis, and internal cycle it is for relapse. At diagnosis, this patient was good risk because of uh, trisomy 3, especially 5, 9, 11, 19, no other abnormalities. And at the time of relapse, what we did observe is uh, a deletion of 17P plus a mutation of TP53. So this patient who was a good risk at diagnosis is becoming ultra high risk at the time of relapse. So I think it is important to perform genetics at diagnosis, but also at the time at least of first relapse. So for the future, I think that targeted uh, exome sequencing will be uh, the standard of care for many patients, at least in Europe and US, Canada, uh, because it is still uh, a little bit expensive. Will it be useful to try to select patients for targeted therapy, except of uh, the mutation of BWAF? I'm not totally convinced that the other KWAS, NWAS mutation are really druggable. And all the other kind of uh, sequencing, meaning all genome sequencing, 
uh, all exome sequencing, uh, uh, RNA sequencing, I think it is more for wizards, and, uh, but we need to use that to try to understand a little bit more the genetics of myeloma. And this is my last slide, I stop here, thank you.